this episode, we interview the most chingona of them all, actress Laura Patalano, who we all know as a spitfire from Mayans and C, Hentified, and most recently, This Fool. Welcome to the Trend Talk. I am your host, Bell Hernandez. And I'm your host, Liza Monet Morales. Welcome back. We have a great show in store for you today. We sure do. We're going to be interviewing actress Laura Patalano. Originally from Mexico, she moved to New York to practice her craft, and she was there for 10 years. Then she moved to Los Angeles, and she's been here ever since working nonstop. Indeed she has. I have to say, I fell in love with her, but also was a little scared of her and hentified and was over the moon when I saw that she was a series regular on This Fool. So I'm super excited that we have her on the show today. But I also want to give a big shout out to Laura for being a trailblazer. Because Belle, it used to be that if you were an actress over your 30s, you were considered washed up. But now we're seeing more and more women that are mature in their 60s working like crazy, much like Laura herself. So as someone who's been tracking the industry for quite some time, Belle, what do you think of the way that the industry has been changing. Wow, I have so many thoughts on that. But first, we're going to interview Laura Patalano, and you have to stay tuned because we will be right back with her interview. <laughs> Welcome back, and I'm super excited to welcome our special guest, Laura. Welcome to the Trend Talk. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Laura, I'm so excited that you're here, but let me tell people a little bit about your trajectory. You were born in Mexico. Yes. You got into acting, where well, we should find out how that happened, but you went to the uh, Instituto de Arte Escenico. Yeah. And you studied there, and then you decided you wanted to go to New York, and you did a lot of theater in New York, and then you said, I'm going to LA. So tell us, how did you get into acting, and all of that transpired? Oh, well, when I was young, I was exposed to art in a very, very young age, probably around 12. I used to go and see plays and all these concerts and kind of that, that kind of thing. So when I was in high school, I decided to join the program after school program for acting for theater. Mm -hmm. And my teacher was Alejandro Vichir, that is a very well known director in Mexico City. And isn't he also the dad to the Bichirs? Yes, to, yes. yeah. That, that's, so I remember the first time that I did an improvisation, he approached to me and he said like, you need to go to school for this because you're so good, you have the talent, you have the gift. So I told him what I need to go to school if I'm already good. <laughs> that's what it. you say I when you're it. 20, right? <laughs> so he said, because you will become somebody with time that will take people's bread away. Es un puerco. Y me las va a pagar el hijo de los... Me las va a pagar el desgraciado. Si ustedes no se pueden hacer cargo, nada más díganme si les queda muy grande el paquete. Yo me le echo. Yo termino con ella. How did you go from after, you know, being there and being in school and being like, okay, Mexico, I love you, but I'm going to go conquer America. And why New York? Well, that was... It's funny because when I... One of my teachers, I remember in one of the classes, he stopped in the middle of the class and he asked me, do you speak English? And I say, no, why? He said, because with your type and how talented you are, you will be no stop working in Hollywood. And everybody started laughing and he said, I live there, I know what I'm talking about. Yes! But no, that's not what brought me here. I, I was a kindergarten teacher also. Oh, oh really? Yeah, I love, I love kids. And I was um, on vacations on Acapulco when I met this American-Italian guy that I saw and I thought it was the most beautiful thing I ever seen in my life. And he saw me and he thought of the same thing. Oh. And after six months, I mean, we spent three days in Acapulco holding hands. Is this your love affair? It's the, well, it's the father of my kids. I and love it's a love affair. It's a love affair. So you came here for a boy. Yeah. I love Without that. speaking the language. Oh, my Providence, God. Rhode Island. I was unable to speak with him. I mean, the language of love. Yeah. Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> oh, that needs no translation. No way, yeah, yeah, exactly. It was so hard for me to communicate with him. And you decided after you're there doing a lot of theater, you lived there for 10 years, correct? 
In, no, in Providence, I lived for a few years, but then in New York, I lived for 10 years. And that's where you were doing theater, but then you decided, I'm gonna go to LA, yes. why? Because I, I always believe that my, the right place for me, it will be California. Los Angeles, because in, in, in New York, we have a lot of Dominicans, a lot yes. of Puerto Rican, but it's few Mexicans. Yes. And I was part of a minority, but I needed to be part of a community. Mm. Wow, and, and I the love community that. here is like huge. And well, speaking of community, I think what is so great, I mean, we've all fallen in love with you oh, in so you. many of the roles that you've done over the years. I mean, just even he, like seeing you, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so great. <laughs> you know, and for the younger generation, they might've gotten familiar with you on Hentified and of course on This Fool, which congratulations, Thank This Fool you. just got picked up for a second season. Now, why do you think your characters are so memorable? Is it the writing? Is it your comedic timing? What do you bring to them? Because specifically, I know the mom, characters are ones that so many of us can relate to. We're like, oh my God, either that was my mother or I know someone like that. Right. I guess a little bit of everything, you know, because I am a, I'm a strong woman. And I believe that uh, many of the Latinas mom are like the character that I play, you know, because we are, we love our kids, but we are like, sometimes we need to give them the tough love. Todas tus porquerías, mijita, y vienen pacaditas, chula. Yeah, what would I ever do without my 50 rosaries? Para que te al diablo, cabrona. You know, what's amazing about your career is that usually Hollywood was like, okay, you're 35, you're done. But you have been acting forever, but now in your later years, you have exploded on all different shows. You did Victor Valentino, you're doing uh, the, This Fool, you did Hentified, you're doing The L Word. You've been to Sundance how many times? Six. I mean, Six. okay, yeah. like you literally are having the career that everyone dreams of. And what I love about this is that, to Belle's point, it didn't happen when you were young, which is what everybody seems to think. Yeah. Oh, you have to be young and you have to be Caucasian. Yeah. And what I love is that you're breaking those stereotypes to say you can be authentic to who you you are 100% yeah. Mexicana y Latina. Definitivamente. Proud of it. ¿Verdad que sí? Con acento también, ¿verdad? Yeah. Without shame and an apology and still keep working. So why do you think that stereotype has changed and how have you helped move that needle forward? I think that Hollywood has changed a lot. It's opened more for Latino roles. In and just for... like five years, because mm -hmm. before, and I've followed Hollywood since 1992, Latinos in Hollywood, but in the past five years, seven years, it's changed. And you're part of that change. So, I'm so lucky then to be right right now in this moment when everything is changing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Actually it happened with animation too, because when I was uh, having the conversation with, uh, with the agent for voiceover, I say, what about animation? She said, forget about it. It's one of the most difficult markets to break into, and you have an accent. And then it changed to the way that they wanted somebody that was authentic, like with an accent. So that's, that's a really good point. You shouldn't always be discouraged what, what, by what people tell you. No. You, and and no. were you ever discouraged to give up? Because you, you got here and you said that you had told us that you didn't st really start really working until five years. Were you ever at a point where you said, I, I'm just giving up, this is too hard? Yes and no. Sometimes I feel it, but I have a very strong uh, emotional support, my twin daughters, that they say, oh, no, no, you're not giving up. <laughs> I love it. No, but sometimes, but most of the times I was thinking, I wa one day I will make it, it's just a matter of time. I don't know if I was overconfident or what was the situation, but I always believe in myself. But the first person that believed in me, it was my mother. Oh. The first time that she saw me on an improvisation uh, acting, I asked her, what do you think, mom? And she said to me, one day you will be big because you're very oh. talented. Oh, that just amazing. Heart. And you are talented. But stay with me, I guess. Yes. And your, your talent is known by everyone. Let's talk this, this fool. Yes. This, that is great. What do you think about your characters in This Fool and también in Hentified? Mal habladas, mamás. So tell us about those roles and tell us how you landed this fool. Because I know that the creator was looking for you. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. He saw my work in Mosquito y Mari. Mm -hmm. That actually was the first movie that I, that I came from New York here oh. to play the character of, uh, uh, of Mosquita. When he saw that, he was impressed with my work. So pretty much he was looking for, when this project came along, this fool, he decided like he wanted me to, to try for me to get the part. How fun is it working on that show? Oh my God. 
a lot of fun. We are laughing all the time. Is there a lot of improvisation that no. like happens as no, well? No, no, no. It's all yes, the time, script, right? But yep. sometimes you can ask if you can add something to make it more real or more you. Mm -hmm. And they are always have that window open, you know? But yeah, no, no, it's, you have to learn your your lines that you you know to how to, how to play the character pretty much for sure now as an actor myself i think one of the things that i often talk about when we talked about this even before we started was we have so many people that are looking to get into the business what advice would you give them as they come in because as we've said if you're going to come into this business you have to come into it for the right reason so what advice would you give out to everyone at home first of all the first thing that i say that my my kids are saying like don't say that mom that is not easy don't say that, ma'am. Is it true? It's so true. <laughs> it's not easy. So if you're looking for something easy, so many kids, they say, I want to be rich and famous. This is not about be rich no. or famous at all. I mean, with time, you realize that you are changing people's lives. Yes. In a massive way. That's and, the most important. And that's interesting because uh, Mosquita and Mari was an independent film, and you do a lot of independent films. Yes. And one of the films that I absolutely loved you was in Maida. You play a dual role. Tell us about that one. That was funny because when I, in, I was introduced with the director, he wanted me for a small part. And then he started writing and writing more and more and more. And then he offered me to be like a twins. And one is in the good side of the law, and the other one is in the bad. Mm. And and it was a lot of fun because well, it was so different. Well, being a mother of twins too, did yes. you have some like insight in like knowing? Oh, <laughs> they the are good so angel different. The little devil. They are yeah. so deep. Yeah. My twins are the mirror twins. Means one is right oh. handed, and the other one is lefty. And they're not oh. identical twins. I don't know because they look a lot alike. So I don't know by now, but I, the, the little one, when they were little, sometimes I feed one twice and the other one I oh, didn't no, feed it. So. <laughs> you know, I mean, you've got to do a lot of juggling. Now, speaking of juggling, as Val was saying, you have all these different aspects that now with your brand that you're looking at doing, right? So you're doing animation, you're doing, you know, a still now TV and film. Are you thinking again to continue to do more theater? Are you thinking also of possibly writing a book? Like what's next oh my for you? God. Well, one of the thing is I love theater but I don't do theater because it's so exhausting and if you do theater then you cannot do TV because you have to be there and it's, it's impossible yeah. for me yeah so I want to write a book about my experience uh, of how it's been my career and my everything that happened to me yeah so far and uh, to encourage kids especially or any people of any age that wants to do this, most important thing, don't give up. Yes. Don't give up. So let's talk about where they can see you because I know that um, This Fool has, has a second season. You haven't filmed that yet. No, in January. So Hulu, it's on Hulu. Yeah. And how many more episodes will you be filming? 10. 10 episodes? Ten yeah. And have you read any of the new scripts? Not yet. What would you want to have happen with your character? I would love her to, to learn English. Oh, good, like good. That. You know, my mom was 95 and she was still going to school. Not, not 95, 90. And she was still going to school wow. to learn English. So never give up on that. On that yeah, actually, exactly. Actually, that, that's so great just to show that intergenerationally you can teach it. I feel you, like can you can do anything. anything yes. Women can do anything, really. So true. That's the reality. Yeah. And you have been doing so much. You're a trailblazer. Oh, you are someone you. That, that people love and that... You, for, for people who are of a certain mature age, it's like life isn't over. There's oh, so no. much more to do. And you're proving that and you're doing it amazingly well. Thank you very much. Ladies. Now Thanks. we have to ask before you leave us, is there anyone that you would want to work with, either a director or another actor? Oh, Guillermo del Toro is one of my yes. favorites, oh my of course. Of he is course. one of my favorites. And, and that's going to happen, I guarantee and you. I have a movie that something that really happened to me uh, when my brother passed away in a motorcycle accident that I wanted to bring it into the, into the movies, yeah. Well, to so your you point, wanted... it's healing, right? Like really using That's the, the idea the with yeah. this movie that is healing. Exactly, that's the idea that when you lose somebody that you love so much, that people stays with you, mm -hmm. even when you cannot see it, maybe in another dimension, that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. Thanks again, Laura, for joining no, us. No, thank you for the invitation. Thank you so much to the audience. Yes, all right, y'all, we'll be right back. We're taking a break, and after that, we'll get a catch up a little bit more with uh, some trending topics. That's right.
Welcome back. Liza, I want to answer your question you asked me earlier about ageism yes, in Hollywood. Yes, please. Okay. So I am so glad that it's changing. Before in Hollywood, if you were 35, you were washed up because women were only looked upon as objects. Mm. And it was about, you know, the, the men could go and be older. And you, you saw a lot of movies with the older man and like a young Audrey Hepburn or whatever. And nowadays, you see more and more actresses and more roles for mature women. Like take, for instance, Jane Fonda, mm -hmm. Lily Tomlin. Helen Mirren. Yes. You have J-Lo. Obviously, we have Laura. And what I love is that you're really seeing women expanding the vision for everybody to say that 60 is the new 30, it right? Is. That, you know, 50 is the new 40, if you will. And you really can go after whatever your dreams are, regardless of your age. So you don't need to use that as an excuse. But what I really love is because we know that Hollywood is really what sets that tone for everybody else out there. Now, you mentioned something interesting. Uh, you said that you didn't feel like the ageism towards men and women is the same. Do you feel no. like that'll ever change? I think so. I think it, it's changing. I think it's changing very, very slowly. Um, and I think it's because we women are speaking up and saying, we're not going to be discounted. Like I'm a baby boomer and I am not going to like say, oh, I'm done. I, I'm not going to do this because people say I'm too old for that. You know, and I think I was going to say it comes from your Latino, at least my Latino upbringing is like, Ay, ya estás muy vieja, ya, ponte, you know, ponte a tejer, you know? Uh -huh. If you're 30, it's like you're, all, you're already too old. And I think we need to stand up and say, I could do whatever I want at any age. And there's these women that are like 95 year old yes. and they're, they're like lifting weights. Have you seen those yes. weightlifters? Yes, but look at even Senora Angela Alvarez who yes. won the Land Grammy this year for Best New Artist. I mean, that to me was something amazing. Talk about a trailblazer and showing that you can have a dream and it can come true at any age. Well, tell us a little bit a little bit more about uh, Doña Alvarez. Yeah, she was amazing. I had the opportunity of having breakfast with her at the Latin Grammys. And what I loved is that she really talked about the fact that when she was in Cuba, you know, her father had told her that is something for other people. You can sing, but no, th this isn't something you can actually pursue. And being the good daughter that she was, she said, okay, I'm going to go pursue the life of being a wife, you know, and a mom. But then obviously we know what happened in Cuba. She sends her kids off as uh, on the Peter Pan flight, if you will, to come here to the U S and I can't even imagine what she had to go through that. But what was interesting is she took to song as her diary. So she wrote all these songs of what happened in her life as she was experiencing it. Cut two years later, her grandson is asking her, Grandma, sing me the songs that you used to sing when I was you know, younger that you would sing to dad. And she goes, oh, yeah. You know, and he's thinking maybe he'd get one or two. Next thing you know, she's putting on like a full performance for him. And he thought, I have to do something with this. So he got together with some friends, made some calls. He's a composer here in Los Angeles and ended up putting a beautiful documentary. He actually reached out to uh, Andy Garcia, who narrates it, which is so great. I mean, you guys definitely have to check it out. And what's so fantastic about that, though, is it really put her on the map. Next thing you know, as she's a singer. as a singer. Next thing you know, she's nominated for a Latin Grammy. Everyone was like, wait, I'm sorry, what? For Best New Artist? But her the emotion you feel when you listen to her songs, you're just you're blown away. Then that night she wins and we were all in awe. And I mean, I had a feeling that she was going to win, but what really got me during the breakfast when we were talking, I said, you know, are you the coolest grandmother, you know, with your, with your littles? And she's like, not only a grandmother, I'm the coolest great grandmother. I'm like, have they asked you to do a TikTok?" She goes, I didn't understand what that was, but they've asked me and I'm doing it. And I thought that is so great. And in true spirit of familia, 20 of her family members bought tickets to come out to the show. So does ageism exist still? Yes. yes. Are we breaking that barrier? Yes. Absolutely. Doña Alvarez is a proof that that's happening. We'd also love to know what you all have to say at home. What do you think? Definitely check in with us on social. All you have to do is head over to Instagram and follow us at the Trend Talk Show and let us know your thoughts. Is ageism here to stay or is it finally going away? Yeah, remember. 30 is a, no, 60 is a new 30. Exactly. I love that. I love that. 60 is the new 30. And with that, we'll be right back. Coming up next, director Jeanette Godoy talks to us about her latest film, Diamond in the Rough. You're not going to want to miss this.
Jeanette Godoy is a first-generation Mexican-American writer-director. She started her career as a choreographer, most widely known for having choreographed the pop culture hit music video, Baby Got Back by Sir Mix-a-Lot. I like big butts and I cannot lie. From working with Chris Rock to Selena, she is one talented director. Recently, she sat down with our host, Belle Hernandez, to talk about her latest film, Diamond in the Rough, where she brings all her talents to the table. Let me start off with, I want to know a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, what you wanted to do in life, and how you ended up being a choreographer, director. Oh, okay. Um, well, I, I'm first generation Mexican American. My father is from Manzanillo, Mexico, and my mom is American. Um, I grew up in Pomona and Riverside. Um, and I was a dancer all my life. I grew up as a ballerina. Um, so I decided to try. I, I got a dance agent in LA and I started dancing um, professionally. And um, I didn't love the auditioning process I found. I found that really intimidating to be honest. Um, and so I, I decided to just jump out and try choreography. I had always been a choreographer since I was a little kid. Like even at the carne asadas at my parents' house, I would have been watching, you know, American Bandstand or Soul Train. I would learn all the dances and then I would be teaching all my tias how to do the dances. So I've been a choreographer since I was a little kid. And as my dad would say, I've always been very bossy. <laughs> Hey, that's a good thing. They tell me that too. I think bossy is good. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, so I just, um, I, I pursued the choreography career. I got extremely lucky that I had this sort of pop culture hit, Baby Got Back, which was just crazy. I seen her dancing to hell with romance and she's sweat, wet, got it going like a turbo vet. After choreography, when my daughters, I have twin daughters and two stepsons, as they got older, I wanted to continue to evolve as a creative person. So I started writing. I wrote a short film. You know, I got into the Sony TV directing program. I wrote another film that made it to the semifinals at Sundance. And now I have it in development with Campanario to try to create a TV show. So I, I see how you got into directing and that's a great thing to do, you know, the programs and all that. And so you have a lot of um, directing experience, but this is um, a, one of the biggest feature films. Can I say that, that you're doing now, uh, Diamonds in the Rough? It's my first feature. It's your my first, first feature, feature film. I, um, you know, I was, I was so lucky to get this opportunity and that creator plus, uh, liked my vision for it. Um, I was thrilled to see that, you know, it was their intention to have it star a Latina. Um, that was like so exciting for me. Um, and there's so many things about Ariana that I can relate to just personally. Two years out of school and still no job. Your parents must be dead. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, no, I'm not. They are dead. I want to say it's a, it's like mean girls at a country club. Everyone loves the, you know, the, the mean girls, you know, cult movie, but it's, it's that, but with this Latina star who is searching for who she is as a person, you know, she's overcome the death of her parents. She's her life's kind of messy. She's not holding down a job and she's got her Theo right? Who's saying, okay, I'm going to send you to my bougie country club to get you an order kind of thing. Rule number one, the dress code is everything. You said she wouldn't last a week. This club will never accept someone like Ariana. Ariana's played by Samantha Boscarino, who's I thought was phenomenal. I mean, she's just such a superstar and it was so much fun to work with her. She was incredible. How hard was it to find her to do the role? You had to go through the whole casting process. You know, I mean, there are a lot of great Latina actresses out there. And especially in this age group of terrific Latina actresses that we were looking at. And, um, you know, we auditioned several. And, you know, it's just when somebody just embodies that role perfectly that you just know. And there were wonderful actresses and, you know, of course I want to hire all of them. Um, but, but when Samantha came on for her, you know, interview, 
she was just Ariana, you know, that kind of thing. So it was, um, I don't think it's that hard as all at all to find a great Latina actress. Yeah. I think we are Latina actresses don't have enough opportunities to be the star of a movie and be in 95% of the scenes. That's what I think. Right. So they're just not, they're not being seen. Well, that's exciting. I'm so happy for this film. I think we need more of this kind of film, more comedy, more levity, uh, more Latinas in the lead and a director. So congratulations. Thank um, you. Look forward to it. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Very proud moment for me. Thank you. And we will be back at you when you do your TV show because it's going to happen. Oh, thank you. I, I predict. That. I predict. Thank you. Let's <laughs> thank put it you in so the much. universe. We need this show. Yes, we do. I've been thinking, I know people who can make people like her disappear. You know Chris Angel? Thank you. Thank you once again for tuning in to The Trend Talk and a big thank you to our guest, Laura. We are so excited to see what happens on season two of This Full. And remember to follow us on social media at The Trend Talk Show. And remember, if it's trending, we're, we're talking. talking. Yeah, no,